and welcome to Rathod's IMS. Today in this session, we are going to see Canadafides of 21st March 2024. So here we are going to take Delhi edition and we are going to pick out important articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. So today in this newspaper, there is not more than six to seven articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And most of the articles are political articles. So they will not you fetch anything. So don't read that political articles. It is my sincere request. So now let us see the front page of Hindu. And one more question that I got in the comment session is like, how can we pick the articles? So how can we know which are the articles important? So for that, I will always say that you have to by heart the syllabus. Syllabus of your UPSC so that you can understand like which article is relevant from our examination point of view. Because directly we can see some keywords in your syllabus that will be appearing in the newspaper headlines. So you have to pick those articles. Okay, so this is a front page. So there is one article which is relevant. So let us see that article. In Supreme Court Center defense appointment of new ECs ahead of Lok Sabha polls. So this article is talking about appointment of election commissioners. So already we discussed this topic number of times because of resignation of Arun Goyal. And finally here selection committee recommended two names and those names had been announced and even president gave approval for the appointment. So those two persons are Subbir Singh Sandhu and as well as Nyanesh Kumar and they take charge as new election commissioners. So this is a background. So I will tell you like what is the background. So what is happening in this election commission of India. So this article is about ECI that is election commission of India. So here you have to know like constitutional provisions for example article 324 of indian constitution talks about election commission of india and if you see members here we have three members so one is chief election commissioner and we have two other election commissioners so this is the members and what is the background of this article here is one election commissioner Arun Goyal, he resigned. And finally, selection committee gave two names to be appointed as election commissioners. And even president gave an approval. So this is the background. So here, how can you expect question from UPSC point of view? So first of all, Election Commission of India, it is a constitutional body. And this constitutional body is a non-constitutional body. So this topic is very important from your prelims. And number of times a question asked from this constitutional body is a non-constitutional body in your prelims. So you have to focus on this chapter especially. And you have to see what is the eligibility criteria for chief election commissioners and as well as two other election commissioners. And you have to see appointment process. Okay, first you have to see like what is the appointment process. And you have to see why it is in news. So what is the issue? So it is issue regarding selection committee. So why this selection committee is in news? Because so normally this selection committee contains three members. So first is our prime minister. Second one is CJI. And third one is opposition party leader so these are the three members but recently in 2023 government present government came up with an act 
so this act which replaced this cgi with cabinet minister so this cgi is replaced with this cabinet minister and who is going to nominate so pm he is going to nominate this member so with this step what happened there is increased role of executive there is increased role of executive in this appointment process so it is one cause of concern right so here in this way you have to connect current affairs with your static syllabus so that there is a high chance of linkage and you can see the different dimensions and you can understand what is going on exactly so and even there is a chance of getting question regarding resignation or removal because arun goyen he resigned he gave his resignation to president of india okay so from that point of view also there is a chance of getting question so these are the areas that you have to focus from this election commissioners so now let us go back to the page and this is the only one article which is very important from our front page and you can leave this city page entirely and even your states page so i found nothing much important in your city page and states page so you can simply move or skip on to your editorial page so in editorial page there are two articles which are important and we are going to see that and i don't want to waste your time because time is very precious for everyone so once time is gone means we can't bring that time back yes or no so utilize your time efficiently try to utilize your time okay so this is my sincere request yes here you can see one important article it is about ferocious friends ferocious friends so recently what happened here is department of animal welfare and husbandry which gave a recommendation that we have to ban this ferocious dogs to keep as pets so we should not keep this ferocious dogs as pets now let us see some dimensions so actually i want to share one my personal experience with this ferocious dog so actually uh, my relatives one of my grandmother she used to have a pet that is rottweiler okay and it is very like if you see that it is very height and after saying that we will be getting fear and we don't used to go to her home so even though she is calling us but because of the fear of dog we don't used to go so one day unfortunately what happened here was like uh, uh, that pet attacked my grandmother because of some incident and that attacked my grandmother very furiously like and that uh, a dog barked everywhere on the body and everywhere on the body so she got injuries we thought that she may not uh, she will not live so she will be dying but unfortunately after admitting in icu after like say 3 to 4 days she got she started recovering okay finally she recovered so at that time yes she left that dog so here this is the incident that i saw personally and she is one of my favorite grandmother so because of that a dog and the fear of dog i used to not to go and meet her so whenever she comes so she used to come to my home okay so that was the experience that i had with that and do you have any experience like that so what is your especially opinion on keeping this previous dogs as pets okay please let me know do you have any pet which is furious dog okay so this article is about so this article it is about pet dogs so why it is in news animal husbandry department gave a recommendation so this recommendation says that we have to ban pet dogs which are furious so here what are the dimensions that you have to see you have to get your perspective
लाइक वेदर वी कैन गो फॉर बैनिंग और नॉट दैट मीन्स यू हैव टू नो आर्ग्यूमेंट्स अगेंस्ट एंड आर्ग्यूमेंट्स इन फेवर एंड नेक्स्ट यू हैव टू सी लाइक वॉट इज अ सोसाइटल इम्पैक्ट and even you have to see like what are the measures that can be taken and even you have to see which are the acts or laws present in in, in india deals with this pet animals okay so all these are dimensions and this topic is important from gs paper 3 and the environment and ecology okay so this is important from environment and ecology and there is also a chance of getting question from your mains and in interview so if you are a pet lover 100% you will be getting this question in your interview so now let us see this topic in detail yeah so let us see one more article in your newspaper so here as i said there are two editorials which are important right so another interesting article here is eliminating diseases one region at a time so it is about eliminating diseases so this article is at most important because it is talking about second disease it is going to be eradicated soon with no known medicines or vaccines that is called as so which is that disease so that is the worm disease gunia worm disease so gunia worm disease was close to eradication so in 1986 there were about 21 countries are facing this but in 2023 it had come down to 13 in 5 countries okay so now let us see this topic in detail and there is a high chance of getting question from this article and it is important from your mains and as well as prelims point of view so this article is talking about elimination of diseases so recently one study which done by carter center so carter center it is the global elimination eradication of diseases so this carter center came up with a report it said that gunia worm disease gunia worm disease it was close to eradication so actually in 1986 in 21 countries 3.5 million cases were there the number had now come down to 13 in 5 countries in 2023 that means there is a reduction of this cases to 99.99% and this would be the second disease after smallpox to be eradicated and it is a first one with no known medicines or vaccines with no no with, with not knowing about which medicines or which vaccines are helpful to deal with this gunia worm disease so we are eliminating that and about 99.99 point okay 99.99 percentage of elimination had already been done so this created an increased attention to disease elimination so it is a first step in eradication so actually there is also one more sustainable development goals like uh, we have to go for ending of this malaria tuberculosis and neglected tropical diseases by 2030 so it is also one of the united nations sustainable development goals so we have to wait and see when whether we are going to do that or not so if you are talking about disease elimination this is one of the focus because we have to enhance health of the people so if you want to enhance the health of people we have to eliminate certain diseases especially if you want to improve the health of poor who are most vulnerable to this infectious diseases and there are many reasons to recommend disease elimination it is one of the public health strategy and there are also requirements for certification by international agencies you are rigorous and you are preparing for the improving of primary health care and we are focusing on diagnostics and surveillance as well and even it will lead to increased involvement 
of field staff and community health workers and actually we have to come up with the proper defined goals and as well as we have to even attract international support for the elimination of diseases. So if you want to go for elimination of diseases, it cannot be done by a single country. So we need international support. So apart from this here, elimination of transmission is challenging. Okay. And even if you want to go for elimination of diseases, so we need to also have good resource or funds. Okay. And therefore, here disease elimination that can be planned only after careful analysis like so how much cost it will take and what are the benefits of this eliminating of so and so disease and even we need 100% political support as well. Okay, so this is the one important thing which mainly said. So for this elimination of diseases, yes, we need to have a proper surveillance system. So what can be done like what are the measures can be taken so here we have to develop proper surveillance system yes we have to develop proper surveillance system and we have to capture every incidence of this disease and even whatever the laboratories are there so we have to strengthen this laboratories for screening and confirmation and we have to ensure that medicines and consumables are available and we have to train whichever the workforce that is present now for the requirements as per our elimination strategy. So this is the first step. And apart from this, elimination of the diseases targeted by the country may be difficult to achieve for the entire nation within a declared time frame. But, but some diseases in some parts of the country can be eliminated. For example, if you see this Kala Azar, it is also called as black fever like that. So this fever is now limited to just five states in India. Okay, it is not seen throughout India. So in this way here, India accounts about 40% of global case load of lymphatic filariasis. And we have to target them for elimination by World Health Assembly resolution. And apart from that, if if we find that which disease which is present in some areas so we have to especially focus on the few states and we can eliminate them by the combination of surveillance by the combination of vector control drug administration and as well as morbidity management so from regional level like we have to focus on multi-sectoral collaborations so which are the sectors involved for example epidemiology department for example statistic department and for example primary health care centers tertiary health care centers so all these they have to collaborate and we have to encourage even innovation and we have to adopt locally effective solutions and even we have to focus on facilitating of disease elimination so this can be done so that we can effectively manage or effectively eliminate the disease at the regional level and apart from that even the national way national level also we need to have a well planned structure and regional implementation needs both technical and as well as material support and even we have to focus on progress of regional elimination as well so in all these areas we have to monitor the things and in india national elimination can be achieved most effectively by starting with elimination and by scaling up and especially we have to focus on the collaboration with the different sector and international support so with these things yes we can go for elimination of diseases so this is very important topic and we are going to see about this ferocious friends they are nothing but our pet dogs not all pet dogs again so which are violent aggressive so recently Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairying urged local authorities to stop granting licenses or permits for breeding and selling of dog, dogs that are considered as ferocious and dangerous for human life. So there is a ban of dogs to keep as pets like ferocious or dangerous for human life. So what are the societal implications of this breeding of ferocious dogs? So there are lots of lots of impacts. First one is public safety is very important. So here whenever we are having these aggressive dogs or ferocious dogs, so they are posing a significant risk to public safety. 
particularly in this densely populated urban areas so where interactions with the humans are common so their aggressive tendencies towards strangers that can result in biting incidents or attacks causing injuries or even fatalities so even i saw one news clip not now uh, recently but around like 7 to 8 months ago i think so so in one apartment so there was one person who is having his pet which is ferocious and whenever he used to leave that dog in that apartment so that it is going and attacking the people who are present in that and many a times the complaints were given by this people who are present in that apartment but even though that person was not like responding so what happens so whenever we are leaving these drugs that will cause incidents like attacks on the other people causing injuries and even sometimes fatalities as well and even these dogs will also cause human animal conflict so breeding ferocious dogs exacerbates the conflict between humans and as well as animals because it will increase the cycle of fear and mistrust between the two and that will leads to negative interactions and potential harm to both animals and as well as humans so whenever you are going for this breed that will also cause damage to the humans and as well as animals and even there is a spread of rabies so whenever we are going for unvaccination of this aggressive dogs that will leads to spread of rabies it is one of the deadly disease in india and even animal welfare is also one cause of concern so whenever we are going for breeding of this ferocious dogs for aggression that often entails unethical treatment and including neglect abuse and mistreatment so these dogs they endure harsh training and substandard living conditions so because of this that will cause physical and as well as psychological harm to humans and what are the measures that we can take to mitigate its impacts so first one is we have to go for responsible dog ownership so the person who is having this pet he is responsible entirely for the actions of that so and so dog so education campaigns they can encourage responsible pet ownership including proper training socialization as well as licensing of dogs and as one is there is a need for sterilization and vaccination programs so mass vaccination and sterilization drives that can help to control the population of stray dogs and even prevent the spread of rabies and we have to even go for promoting of this indigenous breeds okay like well adapted indian breeds okay like lash apps so tibetan terrier that create a safer and more culturally relevant human animal dynamic in cities and next one here is animal shelters and rehabilitation is also very important so we need well funded animal shelters which will be providing the care for this stray dogs because nowadays what happens so if there is any i will tell you example like uh, if there is any incident which is happening with the owner and as well as dog the dog will be left as our grandmother did so whenever they are living in the normal space what happen they will be going for breeding with the local dogs and that will lead to the increasing of the stray dogs and now whenever we are releasing this furious dogs into the local environment then what happen that will be leading to the breeding and the number of furious aggressive dogs will be increasing in the streets right so because of this we need to have proper well funded animal shelters that can provide care for the strays and as well as abandoned dogs so i want to give you one main question students so please do write the answer for this question discuss the societal implications of breeding furious dogs within urban communities examine how these practices affect human animal relationship and public safety proposing measures to mitigate negative impacts so what are the thing that i discussed you can write those as the points that's it this is the answer so now let us move back to our hindu page okay there is one more article which is important that is data marketplaces the next frontier okay data marketplaces the next frontier so here if you have time you can go through this topic but just see one data that is as per nasco report data and artificial intelligence it can add approximately it can add approximately dollar 450 to 500 billion 
to India's GDP by 2025. Okay, so here because of this rapid digitalization of government operations, it accompanied by increase in the volumes of citizen data. So if you're talking about data, we are having two types of data. So first one here is personal data. Like by using that data, we can identify the person like uh, name, okay, age, gender, color complexion like that. So with that data we can understand and we can map that so and so details of that person. And next one is non-personal data so that is excluding personal data. So if you're talking about this non-personal data, it mainly constitutes the primary kind of citizen data which obtained by the government. Okay, so that data will be used by the government for the public good and to create synergies, devise scalable solutions. So we have to go for integration of this non-personal data in the dispensation of public services. Okay, so here this article is this says that data is, is one of the important tool for the future. So in this data, we have personal data and non-personal data. So how you are managing data is very important. Because right to privacy is also the fundamental right which said by our Supreme Court in 2017 in case put us judgment, right? So whenever you are collecting data, you have to ensure that that data is secure. And next, if you go on to this text and context, there are two articles which are important. So first one, it is about on the mass kidnappings in Nigeria. So here you have to see the map of Nigeria. So let us try to understand what is happening in this Nigeria. So if you see the context, it says that on February 29th, suspected Boko Haram militants abducted at least 200 internally displaced people, mostly women and children while they were gathering firewood outside their camps in this Nagla local government area. So what happened Boko Haram militants? So I can say like these are one of the terrorist organization or terrorist grouping. So Boko Haram is one of the terrorist grouping or organization on February 29th. So they abducted around 200 Okay, 200 displaced people and most of them were women. So they went outside their camps to collect the firewood. And if you see some details here, the rise of kidnapping as a lucrative industry in Nigeria. So in Nigeria, what happening here is, so kidnapping is one of the important things which is happening. Okay, so it has stemmed from combination of economic, security and political issues. So because of this kidnapping of women, now it is economic issue, security issue as well as political issue, including struggling economy and there are high unemployment rates in this Nigeria and also there is increasing of inflation and increasing of food insecurity and stability in this Niger, Niger Delta. So all these are the, already the problems like there is high inflation and economy struggling, unemployment rate, food insecurity. But now you're having this new problem of new problem of women abduction. So while government security forces, they are working to obtain the safe release of these victims. So now president has rejected the idea of paying ransom for nearly 600 people. They were abducted in separate incidents. So in this month, so around 600 women, they had been abducted and they are asking money. So here now recently president also rejected the idea of paying the ransom money for nearly 600 people abducted in separate incidents. So now let us see map of this Nigeria. So here we have important gulfs and as well as bites. So we have Gulf of Guinea here and we have Blight of Benin and here we have Bite of Bifra. So these are very very important. And here we have this region is called as Niger Delta. So why it is called as Niger Delta here is. So here we have this river that is river Niger which is forming Delta and this is very fertile region that is Niger Delta. Okay and here you can see like on this river we have one lake that is Kainji Lake. It is also very important. So we have this Kainji Lake 
and if you see some important national park in this niger we have kainji lake national park here okomo national park old oyo national park kamku national park and here we have like cross river national park yanangri national park chad basin national park so and also geshka gumti national park here so these are the different national parks that are present in this niger nigeria so here you can see if you observe those national parks they are present where the river or the tributaries are present so this is one important thing that you have to observe and if you are talking about uh, the countries which are sharing boundary boundaries like here we have niger okay and here we have benin and here we have cameroon and here we have like okay that's it and here we have like chad region so here here lake chad okay so these are some important things that you have to see and important lakes are kainji lake and as well as lake chad so these are some geographical things that you have to remember and now let us move on to next topic so here you can see like why has karnataka banned certain coloring agents so do you know about the street foods actually i love street foods but my husband will not allow me to have the street foods at all so before marriage i used to have lots and lots of street foods but after marriage i lost my independence to have the street foods so if you see i like the cotton candy the most and you can see the cotton candy will be available in different colors like pink color and sometimes light blue or light yellow in color and even have you ever had this pani puri so in this pani puri also they will be adding like green color water right so it is made up of like coriander pudina etc but even in that also they will be adding green food color okay so what happened here is so in the market we will be getting lots and lots of coloring agents like red color orange color and low color green color like that so whether these coloring agents are good for health no not at all so they are chemicals right so they were harmful agents so because of this karnataka government took this step to ban this coloring agents so now let us see this article in detail so context why it is a news karnataka became the third state in south india to ban certain coloring agents in cotton candy and as well as gobi manchuria that are found to be harmful some coloring agents are harmful so now karnataka government is a third state which came with the banning of coloring agents and even gobi manchuria is also one of my favorite favorite all time snack but after seeing this i felt like morning no what happened so can i move with this having this manchuria or not so if you see the details it says that the government plans to create awareness among manufacturers it has also urged consumers to be aware of what they are consuming so why government came up with this because health of the people is also at most important for the government so government is creating awareness among manufacturers and even it is urging government is urging the consumers that be aware so aware like what you are eating okay so just concentrate on what you are eating eat healthy eat right and even we have this movement called as eat right movement yes or no yes so here fssai that is food safety and standards act stipulate a fine of not less than 10 lakh rupees and also a jail term for minimum of 7 years and even that term can be also extended to life imprisonment against who are using those banned chemical substances in the food products and even yesterday itself i saw one news okay accidentally and i felt that i will not allow my children to take ice creams on the road side for sure so in my childhood i used to have the ice creams on road side on the small ice cream uh, okay but now i will not allow because i saw this news like so you will be you will be seeing like faluda faludas okay small vehicle of small um, faludas like that and even there will be like lot of the juice points which will be providing uh, fruit salads 
and badam milk etc and also lemon juice like that right so yesterday unfortunately i came up with this news like in ice creams so that so and so rajasthani person so he is adding urine and also sperms but i don't know why okay so please be aware like what you are eating okay so don't have the food which is of road side so have the food from some good and where the place is neat and tidy and in some places only but not on the road side where it is not clean because health is at most important so if you lost money something is lost if you lost health everything is lost right so focus on your health health is very important okay so this is about this topic and now let us move on to our hindu newspaper and even the states page you can skip and that the states page world page and business page i found nothing much important so just skim through this article so here you can see like pm speaks to putin zelensky calls for a dialogue diplomacy to end war so this article it is about russia ukraine and what is the role of india in this russia ukraine crisis so you are going to have a dialogue so once it comes we are going to discuss that topic for sure and next if you move on so most of the articles are political articles so they will not fetch anything for you and me okay so skip, simply skip and even the business page also i found nothing much important so you can directly move on to this last page that is science page so in this science page today i found one species that is right whales yes i found somewhat interesting that we will be going for fishing right especially coastal areas people they will be dependent on the fishing and they will be using like bottom trawlers bottom trawlers and also like big big nets to catch the fish sometimes this big animals they will be also entangled in this fishing nets so this article is talking about what is the impact of entanglements okay so how this entanglements will be affecting this right whales okay it is talking about entanglements so what is the impact of this entanglements is the first thing and even you have to see one more dimension here is you have to see some facts regarding this right whales okay it is important from environment and ecology so this entanglement topic is important from biodiversity so why this article is important and how you can use this article so how means whenever you are writing about fishing and impacts of fishing you can use this article as an example like right whales they are having negative impact on their health okay and even on reproduction also on reproduction also there is decreased rate of reproduction sometimes after entanglement so this right will say will not going for even breeding at all okay so because of this what happened so it will be having impact on biodiversity because these right whales are already critically endangered category their number is decreasing day by day and because of this entanglements they will not going for breeding so if there is no breeding there is no next generation so if there is no next generation that will leads to entire extinction of the species yes or no so in this way you have to think about this topic and now let us see some facts regarding this what this article is saying about a new study so a new study has reported that even entanglements scientists they classify minor have devastating impacts on critically endangered right whales so on this right whales so especially this critically endangered right whales so there is a devastating impacts surprisingly the potential mothers who suffers entanglements they have lowest chance of starting breed so they will be not going for breeding and there are very less chances to go for breed whenever once they get into this entanglements 
so why because so whenever this fish which had been stuck in the nets it is causing a great threat to these critical endangered animals so whenever these webs are entangled in the nets for example this is the net so in this net so this whale has been entangled okay then what happened so the whales become entangled in the fishing gear so they have to use some extra energy for dragging as on if somebody if someone uh, who tightly holds you so if you want to come out of that so you have to use some extra energy so that is the thing that my daughters use very very thing and she uses always her energy waste always her energy to come out of someone and she want to be playing free on the ground so if one if someone is lifting her so she don't she don't want to uh, lift her okay and she always use some extra energy to come out so the same way here whales so they if they become entangled in fishing gear so they use some extra energy for dragging it as they swim so if the rope which is caught around their mouths they may struggle to feed and what happens slowly slowly they have to starve because of this this, this can cause infections sometimes and chronic emaciation and even damage to the whale's blubber muscle so this blubber muscle which keeps them warm and even bones as well as bellies so what happen the structures of the mouth that they used to filter the prey will be also get affected and even when entanglements does the sometimes it will not kill the whales but it can affect the individual's ability to reproduce okay so which is very very important why because without reproduction so we can't see the next generation okay so this is the thing which me they said and these are the some important points that you have to remember from this article and these are the most important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper and one more thing here is the registrations for the saturday exam is going on so with the registration only we can conduct the test and we will be providing you one to one mentorship on that day and later on you will be also getting the free classes okay daily around 1 to 1 and a half hour you will be having classes from 5 to 6 or 6:30 pm by different faculty and we are going to take classes only on the topics which are highly important and there is a chance of getting your questions on that topics and one more thing here is we are also going to provide the free study space you can come to this offline branch in this ashoknagar if you are in hyderabad or in ashoknagar you can utilize the free space as well and we are also providing the free mentorship you can take that free mentorship for prelims still prelims you are going to provide the free mentorship and that's all for today and i will show you like where can you get the notes of this class so the notes of this class you can get from this telegram channel that is rathod's is classes do join this channel so that you can get the notes in the pdf format and this is our website rathod's is academy so here we are providing lots and lots of courses and prelims is very near so if you have any doubt regarding any subject you can take the courses that we are offering in rathod's is so that there will be 100% conceptual clarity and the price here is very less it is less than 3000 rupees for single course and even if you want to take the foundation course offline foundation course batch is going to be started either in the end of june or for the first week of july so you can take the admission so admissions are going on so there are only limited seats there are 70 seats only for a batch not more than that because we are focusing on student student is at most important so the key different features of this rathod's is offline coaching is so 100% syllabus coverage and we are going to discuss even a single sub topic also in the great detail and we are going to have previous questions discussions and also mains answered in practice from the day one and there will be mentorship one to one mentorship will be there on every sunday on every sunday student should come and meet the mentor for sure and we are going to have prelims test series and we are exclusively focusing on current affairs from the day one onwards okay and the price is affordable okay so if you want to take the course and if you want to talk to me directly regarding the offline 
and if you want to take the admission so you can call me on this number 8074765513 or else you can come to office which is in ashok nagar exactly pill pillar number 36 of this 9 is steel bridge third and fourth floor opposite vijaya medicals and you can come and you can meet me in the office that's all for today thank you so much for watching and please do subscribe to rathod's is academy